Hi, there are many questions I've been asked about how to study for CPZ, like what are the study tips, how can I make it easy, how can I follow a disciplined study pattern. Don't worry, I got you covered. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide. Hi, in my last video in the CPC series, we saw about the CPC as an overview, like how the exams will be, what about the examination fees, and uh, what are the two types of examination available, and then what are the question patterns, everything yeah. explained in detail in my previous video, CPC and overview. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll put a link in the description box or somewhere over here, so you can just watch it first, and then you can come to this video. And this video is the most awaited video or you can say like most people uh, question me about this like how can I study for CPC. So this video is all about the study tips for CPC. So if you don't want to miss any of the tips, please watch till end to get the full benefit of it. I'll give you around 7 tips to have a successful study time and how to crack that exam in the first go. The first tip here is make it your goal. So like any other exam or any other you know, career path, you should always fix your goal. You should have a clear vision on where you are going. You should have a goal like in this month, within this month, I should crack this exam or I should appear for this exam in three months or six months like that. Just make a target goal for yourself. So that will ultimately motivate you to study hard. Why my first point is make it your goal? Because this goal will give you a clear vision and make yourself make yourself much more focused like for example if you don't know the deadline for something like for some normal work or anything really do it much sincerely you, because there is no deadline right you will drag the process you will study when you're interested and you will like feel bored quickly but if you have a goal like this my goal this my target date I'm not telling you to book your exam no don't book your exam before preparation I'm telling you to fix a goal for yourself of course the goal should be like achievable don't stress yourself by creating unrealistic goals make your goal realistic like don't think like in two weeks I'll study my exam or in one month I'll fix my exam maybe some people out there can study in one month so those people can fix it as a one month goal but in general I always encourage the new people to have like three month goal or a six month goal but don't go beyond six months you know you will feel bored and you lose interest in exam so to have a clear vision a focused study you should always make it your goal and also if you make it your goal you will not have second thoughts like you know people sometimes they start studying and then they have self-doubt they will think like will I crack this exam will the, uh, is this accomplishable by me or is this uh, like valuable or all those things will come into your second thoughts if you set an ideal goal you will never have second thoughts so setting a goal will also give you ample amount of time to plan in advance. When you set a goal to study, always have a support. Like it can be anybody, either your parents, your family friends or somebody or your friends who is also studying coding. So you will always have a support like who can encourage you when you're down or who can like guide you in something. So always have a support. And finally, in making it your goal to crack the CPC exam, commit yourself. Commit your time and commit everything so you'll not fail. The second one in CPC study tips is have a disciplined study plan. Yes, you heard me right. You should be disciplined. Also, your study plan should look disciplined. So always have a clear study plan so you'll have a focused and disciplined study. What do I mean by disciplined study plan? So you should study regularly. It's not like a weekly one study or like monthly twice study. It's not like that. Every day you should take a small step in studying. Allocate a particular time, a disciplined time, which is feasible. So you have to strategize your plan. Like for example, when I appeared for my CPMA exam, my study plan was actually one month only because I have a very short uh, time. At that time, the exam here in Abu Dhabi, it's not like every month or every week like that when I appear for CPMA exam so in that thing after booking the exam only I strategize my plan but uh, it's not because I'm overconfident but because I know the plan I know the exam breakdown and I already had the uh, resources the books and everything the books the more questions like I had a two more questions the books and everything so I thought like I can make it so I dedicated one month completely to study and I strategized my study like today what I will study I put a date and I put my study times like 
for the 30 days what i'll do like i put day one date and what subject i should cover on that day then day two what subject i should cover on the next day day three like that and where should i sit and write my mock exam like that i strategize my plan i didn't go like randomly i didn't i didn't just open my book and read whatever comes in my comes before my eyes it's not like that i put a plan strategized which is which is applicable to me it might not be applicable or feasible to, to you you have your own style right so plan strategize your plan according to your style and according to your capabilities so the next one in discipline study plan is you should have no distractions no mobile phones no tv no extracurricular activities yes i know it's hard it's like other exams only for college exams when there's an exam do you go and play cricket Maybe some people are saying, yes, I'll play cricket. <laughs> okay, it's up to you. But most of the people will not go and like play outside, will not like sit in the mobile phone or will not watch a long hours of television. I'm not saying don't cut everything. Reduce all those extracurricular activities so you can completely focus in the exam. So the third point here is know your basics. Before sitting for studying, you should know the exam pattern, like how many hours exam, how many questions and all those things. It's an open book exam, so you should be, you should know how to navigate everything. All these small things you should already know. You should know the basics and also the exam breakdown, like which uh, uh, chapter has how many questions, like uh, ICD has how many questions, like CPT, EINDM has how many questions, anesthesia like that, and HIPPICS has how many questions. This one I already posted in my previous video, CPC and overview, if you don't know that, you can go and watch that one to have a clear picture of that so you should know all these basics without this you cannot strategize your plan at the first step itself know what and all is important what or which which questions are important and which uh, area you should focus all these basics you should know and the fourth and most important point is know what to study so when it comes to studying college days, what we used to do, like uh, we used to go out of the box, right? We have to, we used to go and refer some other books also. In coming to CPC, you don't have to go outside the box. Only these three books are enough, like the CPT book, ICD 10 CM book, and the HIPPICS book. Only these three are enough. For anatomy and physiology, believe me, everything will come inside the CPT book itself. CPT and ICD book has so many, you know, when you go through the book, or if you've already seen the book, you would have seen so many uh, pictures with the illustrations thing. so that alone is enough if you want to know learn more about thing get out of the box but for the exam i believe and i suggest also like focus only on these three books don't go out of any of these books like there are some institutes which give extra additional books which is useful for you in your career path but for the exam you know these three books is enough the next in the fourth point is don't spend equal time in each subject each chapters what do i mean like the time spent for the anesthesia should not be equal to the time spent for the e and m because anesthesia can be learned quickly the anesthesia chapter can be learned quickly the same thing this time spent for icd 10 cm don't have to exceed beyond the surgery pad entire surgery uh, cpt guidelines so don't spend too much time in minute things which you already understood like if you can read through it and you understood just leave it alone don't think like for anesthesia you have to spend one hour time for endem you have to spend one hour time no it's not uh, it's not the right way if you spend anesthesia one hour and if you spend endem one hour you'll definitely lose marks in endem because endem uh, evaluation and management section needs extra uh, attention you should understand too many things in e and section so give some extra time for that so don't spend equal time in everything also don't spend uh, like too much time in ICD 10 CM because there are so many people out there really ask me like uh, ICD 10 is very difficult to understand like so I have to spend so much of my time in ICD 10 alone I'm like I'm telling them don't spend too much time in ICD 10 CM alone because the questions are less compared to the entire CPT also it is easy you can like when you pr keep on practicing ICD 10 CM diagnosis you can easily pick up because it's, it's straightforward if you know the slightest guidelines there but the CPT unlike the ICD 10 CM it's not straightforward you have to think you have to understand the question and you have to know the uh, guideline and also you have to know the anatomy physiology to capture the CPT codes 
so spending time in each chapter should be based on the complexity of that chapter like how complex is that then how you understand like maybe that area is very weak for you so you have to spend more time on that if it's like you can easily understand some area you can spend less time on that so based on the complexity and based on your uh, capability and strength distribute the time for study so spend a specific amount of time for the modifiers for the medical terminology and anatomy you can always like whenever you're studying the cpt book or the icd book just go through the pictures in between and uh, read this anatomy i think in icd uh, 10 cm all the anatomical pictures illustrations are in like in the front page right in the front few pages so you can go through that and you can just go and uh, read all those anatomical illustrations it's it is already labeled so you can go and read all those things and in the cpd there are some pictures in the front and also in between the CPT codes there are so many illustrations so the other study tip here is you should know the alphabetic arrangement of the ICD like what starts with A what starts with B what starts with C what starts with O like that you should know the uh, alphabetic arrangement in ICD and also you should know the CPT number arrangement in CPT you should know what are the one series what are the five series what are the seven series what are the nine series like that so you should know what is what and what is where so if you know all these simple things, these are simple things but this will you know can rule out the answers like out of the four answers you can easily rule out one or two in many of the options so like this d doesn't belong to this uh, question so you can easily rule out so know your series in the icd alphabetic series and in your cpt your number series and in this fourth what to study tip know your guidelines you should read and understand the icd and cpt guidelines i always tell you and again i'm telling that one don't memorize don't ever memorize the guideline it will not help you at all completely understand the guideline if you don't understand the guideline don't move away from that again read that and if you still can't understand the guideline ask your peers who are experienced ask your seniors or if you don't have anybody to ask you can very well ask me you can put your questions in the comment section below I'm most happy to answer all your queries and in ICD, know your conventions, general coding guidelines and chapter specific guidelines. I've already posted a video for the conventions, general coding guidelines and, I'm and I have already started chapter specific guidelines. I'll put a link in the description below. In my future videos, I'm planning to start the CPT series as well. So it will be beneficial to you. We saw, don't go out of the boxes. It's all in those three books. Don't spend equal times in all chapters. Plan your time according to the complexity, according to your strength and weaknesses, and also according to the challenging areas. And then uh, you can you can learn your medical terminology. And I said anatomies are always already in the CPT and ICD books. And just you can focus on the modifiers. Then know the letter range of the ICD and the number range of the CPT because you can easily rule out many questions in that. And you should learn about the guidelines in both CPT and ICD. And as already told, don't memorize, just understand. The fifth study tip here is prepare your books. Yes, like preparing yourself, you should also prepare your books. When you have the new book for exam, you can prepare your book. For the study purpose, if you're using a photocopy of a book, you don't have to prepare that. Just do whatever you want with that because you'll not be using that one. So if you're going to appear for the exam, you'll always take your book. But in India, I heard like they're providing the book in the exam hall. So in that case, you don't have to prepare your book because it's already available there. But uh, in abroad, like in UAE, you have to take your own book. In my when I wrote CPC back in 2011, actually we took the book, we prepared that. But in India, I heard like they are giving, they're providing the book in the exam hall. I'm not so sure about that. If you know that, please put it in the comment section below. So I'll be sure about that. If in your location, you should bring your book for the exam. So your new book will be there. You should always prepare it. Like there will be tabs available, like color, color stickers, you know, it will be available in the books in the front page. You can, you know, in the CPD book. So you have to tab it like tab each section of the uh, CPT so it will be easy for you to pick even in the tab the headings are written like a rad for radiology uh, DIG for digestive system like that so it's easily for you to pick when you see digestive you can easily pick that one like the pick the, pick that page when you read through the APZ exam guidelines they say you can highlight certain things but don't highlight anything don't write anything sometimes the proctor might not you know in, be interested in that highlights and uh, writings so instead of getting disqualified instead of getting your books revoked it's better to not highlight 
in ICD-10, it will be already highlighted just like each code and each uh, you know the conventions or the descriptions have some highlights you don't have to highlight anything but you have to understand what those highlights mean so, so it'll be easy for you to navigate the codes so number sixth point here is practice more so you know the proper saying right practice makes man or woman perfect so you have to practice more to get yourself prepared for the time management and also to navigate the book quickly and also practice like you're appearing for the real exam don't practice like for one hour write an exam it's not like that practice maximum for four hours exam like so for for this practice exam always allocate a time your weekend or where you have a complete four hours free time at least i highly encourage you all to practice at least three practical exam three practice three practical mock exams like complete four hours exams so you'll know where you are standing so once you practice, always evaluate that questions and focus on the weaker areas where you made mistakes, focus more. Always encourage this practice exam before like 10 days or 20 days of your exam, actual exam date. Because if you're doing it exactly before one or two days before the actual exam date, at that time, if you find your weaker areas, you will not have enough time to, you know, study again and uh, recollect stuff. So you'll have ample amount of time to uh, focus on your weaker areas and again practice one more question till you're satisfied. The seventh point here is focus on yourself before the last three days of your exam. So these last three days should not be your study days. There are so many people who like study only for three days. These three days should be like a refresher day. Like you have to just slowly go through the books and focus on something. If you like think I forgot or I don't understand this one, focus on these key areas. You can focus on important questions or you can focus on the toughest uh, guidelines like that. Just refresh your guidelines, go through your books calmly. If something is striking, you can just read that. In this three day, if you're okay, you can go for only one mock test. You can sit and appear for one mock test. And that's it. Your study months are finished. So you can quietly relax, have a quiet time with you or eat well, sleep well, rest well. Don't get too much stress in these three days. You know, all your efforts should not run outside the door. So keep yourself calm and composed. And in this three day, you can prepare all the materials needed for the exam, like the pencil, eraser. Uh, if you want, you can use a ruler or a scale. Take your photo ID, whatever ID is required to show to the exam hall, all these things. Your books, your bag, your outfit and everything. That's it. So if you follow these steps, I'm sure you can easily crack the exam. You, some people might think like this tips are not very much useful <laughs> you know for any exam you can follow this tip it's not only applicable to cpc exam it is applicable to any exams out there even your college exams or whatever it is maybe the subject is different but the study tips are same i believe it's universal so follow these seven study tips and definitely you can crack your exam hope this video is useful to you if you found this video to be useful please hit the like button and if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification icon so you'll not miss any of my future videos. If you have any doubts, you can put it in the comment section below. I'm very much happy to clarify all your doubts. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide.